All right, it is that time to once again go over the results from the latest SCG standard event. Now, a few things to bear in mind before we get started here is that one, the main event was the open legacy tournament and not the standard format. In SCG, they do run three different uh, league, not leagues, but three different uh, events. They run the classic, they run the open, and then they run the invitations. Now, another thing I want to point out as we get started is the fact we only had two mono blues here in the 16. You can see we have the mono blue at place 16, and we have one at place number 8. I want to talk a little bit about these two versions of the mono blue deck, mainly because both of these two mono blue decks have actually chosen to reduce the Miss Clock Herald to a very low number. You can see in this particular version, it was only a single copy, and the other mono blue was two copies of the Miss Clock Herald. Personally, I don't like going down to this low number. Yes, the Drake is good, but the fact that you can actually block the Drake makes him a less desired target for Curious Obsession. And when you only have two, or in this case, one Miss Clock Hurl, it is very hard to get that perfect Curious Obsession start. Now, obviously, you can still use the Drake and the Storm Tamer to put your Obsession on, but I dislike seeing Miss Clock Herald being cut down to such a low number because the card is just so good with Obsession. And obviously you don't really want to put Obsession on the Storm Tamer because you want to be able to sacrifice him to protect whoever gets targeted and assuming, and I assume that tends to always be the Curious Obsession target slash the Tempest Jin. Anyway, let's get into the top 8 of this particular tournament slash event, whatever you want to call it. So on place number 8 we're gonna find the second mono blue aggro deck and as we can see this one had two Miss Clock Herald but pretty much everything else is the same as the past couple of weeks. We can see two Essence Capture. This is probably the card that tends to fluctuate the most when it comes to different mono blue aggro decks at least for the past couple of weeks. There has been two copies, one copies, I've seen three, and don't think I've actually seen four yet. But otherwise, everything here is pretty much the same. Now, I do find kind of curious that he runs a single call of shard, of course. This is probably the card that has been cut the most when it comes to blue, mono blue lists. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the sideboard. Nothing really surprising here. We can find the exclusion mage. The Search Mare, Deep Freeze, four copies of Negate, that is kind of weird, I haven't seen this particular tech before actually, so that is something new. And then you have your standard Entrancing Melody, obviously amazing against uh, mirror matches, but you know, when it comes to mono blue mirror matches, it's pretty much whoever casts the first creature and gets to stick, pretty much has won, because everything is pretty much going to get countered unless you mana screw or mana flood really really badly. Anyway, let's move on to place number 7. Now, as I've done in the previous weeks, I'm not gonna talk that much about the Nexus deck at all. Now, it's not only because I despise this particular deck and everything it stands for, it's mainly because there is not that much to say about the Nexus deck. It is very straightforward. You can do some small tweaks, but overall, it has a simple goal, it has a simple game plan, and that's pretty much all you can say about it. Now, something I do want to point out is the inclusion of the Harpooner. Now, this card has seen a lot of play recently, mainly because of Mono Blue, because this card is really good against Mono Blue. I actually looked through every single deck on this 16 list, and anyone that ran green pretty much had Harpooner somewhere. I even saw Harpooner in main board unless I hallucinated that. Obviously the Harpooner is mainly for mono blue. Yes, it can work against drakes, but usually you don't have enough creatures in your graveyard by the time you actually want to use the Harpooner to actually make it matter. Obviously, as a 3 power creature, it can quite easily force out either a essence capture or sacking a bird 
or a dive down in order to save that whatever creature you have on the board from the effect. Anyway, let's move on to the next deck, and it's gonna be the mono white slash blue. Again, you have seen it all before. This is basically a mono white deck with a splash of blue for counter spells in the sideboard and for that one copy of Deputy Detention. The number of Deputy of Detentions varies from deck to deck. I've seen one, I've seen two, I've seen three. Now, one card I do want to point out if you're new to Magic is the Honor Guard. You might not realize why this is included in this particular deck. What the Honor Guard is for is mainly against Sultai decks because the Explorer only occurs when they enter the battlefield and Honor Guard stops the Explorer. So if you try to play anything with the Explorer and Honor Guard is out, all you get is a 2-1 elf that sits around and does nothing. Obviously, as a 1-3, it can also beat up on elves slash, slash block elves as well. Obviously, it has other functions, but it's mainly for soul tie decks and to make their life miserable and force out a cast down or whatever to trade in order to get that explore effect to occur. Alright, so let's move on to place number 5, and here we're going to find a new deck. It's going to be Grull Aggro, and this is the first time I think I've seen a Grull Aggro list finish in a top 8. Anyway, this particular version runs, well, good creatures. We have Chain Whirler, Grow Chamber Guardian, Spellbreaker, Rekindling Phoenix, and Siege Can Commander. Obviously, that card that I do want to highlight is the Harpooner, and in this case we do find Harpooner in the main board. I don't want to take too much time just talking about Harpooner, but as we can see right here, it can actually work as a main board card, other than that, there's not too much to actually talk about. We do find two copies of the Chaos Bringer, obviously a good Planeswalker, and once rotation occurs, I'm expecting to see a lot more play from this particular Planeswalker. When it comes to the spells, we have some standard removals together with Collision. One interesting thing I want to point out is the fact that we are now seeing Shock as the main board card in red, and we do find the Lava Coil in the sideboard. But other than that, there's not too much to talk about. The list looks really fun, and it obviously is playable. Anyway, let's move on to place number 4, and here we're gonna find our first Soul Time midrange. Although there were, I think, 3 that finished outside the top 8. Now, again, there's not much to say about this particular deck that hasn't already been said. The list is pretty much as it's always been. Yes, you're gonna see one more or one less of a certain removal, but other than that, this is pretty much straightforward. Now, what I do want to highlight in this particular version is the fact that it is running Spell Pierce main board, and the fact that it's running Spell Pierce in Sultai is surprising to begin with because that is actually not something anyone has been running in Sultai at all. At least not in any of the top 8 lists that I have looked at. Another interesting card in this particular list, or well, the only interesting card in this particular list, is really the Harpooner. Again, this is becoming a staple of cards really for anyone that can run it really. It just, it's not a perfect answer to Mono Blue, but it can certainly help against Mono Blue. But other than that, this is your standard Sultai mid-range deck, there's not much to say about it. I guess I could once again talk about how Carnage Tyrant is pretty much gone from Sultai by now. Like, I saw a few that didn't have a Carnage Tyrant at all. I saw one with a 1-1 one -one split, one mainboard, one sideboard. But as I said a few weeks ago, the card is really falling out of the Sultai deck. There's just no place for him anymore. And obviously... Against Control, it's really hard now when they have four sweepers in the main board to get your Carnage Tyrant to stick. And against the rest of the format, most of the time the deck will have beaten you to a pulp by the time you can resolve your Carnage Tyrant if that would be your only game plan. Like, yeah, you might summon a Carnage Tyrant, but there is a... Well, there might be two Adonta Vanguards with a champion with a few knights on the opposite side, so... Yay, you got the Carnage Tyrant, but you're probably dead the next turn. 
if you play against Mono Blue, well, they just fly over you. If you play against Drakes, well, they fly over you. If you play against any kind of aggro that has red, well, you're probably close to dead by the time you're resolving the Tyrant, so it's probably not going to save you. So yeah, the card is... I mean, the card was good, and obviously when Golgaria was the dominating deck in the format, the card really shone. But as it is, the card is... Nah, you don't really need this card anymore to actually play Soul Tie. Anyway, let's move on to the third place deck, and that's going to be Rakdos Aggro. Now, when it comes to Rakdos Aggro, there are two types of decks. There are the one that runs really cheap creatures, like this one, and there's another version that runs the more expensive package, where I think it started like 3 mana and up in the terms of creature cost. Now, the deck is really straightforward. You have your Firebrand, you have your Lava Runner, Essentially, it is kind of a mono red or a red deck wins with a splash of black to get some more removals and to also get access to Ricks. Obviously, Ricks kind of forces you to go into black in order to get access to the ability. And, you know, the card is just really good. You get a body that can also draw your cards. Like, that's something mono red always loves and it's something that's very rare to even find in red. Like, finding red creatures that allows you to draw, very rare. And obviously this is a black-red creature if you want to draw power. Well, I guess you could technically just use it in a mono-red uh, just as a single card draw engine, and even then it would actually be quite good. Anyway, outside of your standard red creatures, you do have, well, your standard red spells. You have the Lightning Strike, Shock, light up the stage and a single copy of Wizard Lightning with Experimental Frenzy to go crazy at times. Now, once again, I do want to highlight that we're not seeing the Lava Coil in mainboard anymore. We're seeing Lava Coil in the sideboard once again, and again, it is mainly just to be able to actually threaten blue. Anyway, let's move on to place number two, and here we're going to find our final version of the Sultai deck. Now this one is the one that runs one Carnage Tyrant in the mainboard and one Carnage Tyrant in the sideboard. Everything else is standard. You have your Explore package, you have your very expensive mana base and a few removals. And just as with everything else that could run green, it is including now the Harpooner, mainly, you know, once again to deal with Mono Blue, but as I said earlier, in Sultai's case, you can also use it to deal with drakes because you do get creatures into your board when you're playing against drakes. Plus, you do have actually, you know, a lot of creatures to actually boost it, unlike the Nexus deck that usually has like one creature in the deck or sometimes none. So you're not really gonna use the Harpooner to go up against drakes. But yeah, let's move on to the deck that actually won this. And sadly, it's going to be a Nexus deck. So, once again, not too much to talk about. Now, this particular version ran two copies of Hydroid Crisis. I can't say anything that I haven't already said about Hydroid Crisis. The card is one of the best printed standard cards in a very long time, minus Teferi. But apart from that, there's nothing to really talk about with this particular list. The one thing I can talk about is the fact that they have started to run the ooze. I'm not talking about Nexus decks overall. They do run now ooze in the sideboard. I think every single version of the Nexus that I have seen has been running Mr. Ooze. Obviously, if the card sticks, and obviously when you go with Nexus of Fate, you can quite easily get an army of tiny, tiny slimes to beat down your opponent with. And as I said previously, Everyone that runs green now runs the Harpooner. That's pretty much a given. Anyway, I catch you next time. This is Project signing out.